In this lecture, you'll learn how to verify the spanning tree protocol. I'm using the same network topology that I've been using throughout the rest of the section. So we've got the layer three part of the network up at the top with our routers R1 and R2 and going northbound. And then we've got the layer two part of the network with our core distribution switches, CD1 and CD2, and our access layer switches, access three and access four. There's obviously layer three connections going from the PCs up to the routers as their default gateway as well. So what we want to do here is to map out how the spanning tree has been configured. In this example, the switches have been configured with VLANs, but spanning tree has not been configured at all. So they're all going to be using the default priority. So what we want to do here is to determine which is the root bridge first. Then from there, we can figure out our root ports on the other switches, our designated ports and our blocking ports so that we can check that spanning tree has eliminated any loops in the layer two part of the network. And we can also see the tree that traffic is going to be traveling over. Now, the diagram here is a screenshot from packet tracer and I've got the link lights enabled so you can actually see easily where the root bridge is and the path that traffic is going to go over. Just from looking at it here you see that both axis 3 and CD2 their links are all green so one of those two is going to be the root bridge and on CD1 it's blocking a port going towards CD2. So CD2 can't be the root bridge, it's going to be access free. I can see on access free all the links going to it are green on both sides. I can also see from the diagram that the ports that are being blocked are gig O slash 2 on CD1 and port fast 0 slash 21 on access 4. So both of the possible loops going from CD1 to CD2 to access 3, that has been broken by blocking gig 2 on CD1. And the potential loop between CD1, CD2 and access 4 has been broken by blocking the port fast 0 slash 21 on access 4. Okay, so I can see all that from the diagram, but... Obviously, in the real world, you're not going to have a diagram which shows you exactly how spanning tree is configured. So how do we figure out how the spanning tree is laid out in a production network? That's what we're going to cover here using the same example topology. So really the Swiss Army knife command for checking your spanning tree configuration is show spanning tree. You already know that the default spanning tree version on a Cisco switch is PVST plus, which runs a separate spanning tree instance for every VLAN. So you also need to specify the VLAN as well. In the example here, we're running the command first off on the root bridge, which was on axis three for our example. So I say show spanning tree VLAN one. So you have to, well, if you don't specify the VLAN, it will show you the spanning tree for all of your different VLANs. And if you've got a lot of VLANs on the switch, it's gonna be very long output. So you want to specify the particular VLAN. The next thing you can see here is that the protocol is IEEE. And it's not actually using one of the standard IEEE spanning tree versions. It's using Cisco's proprietary PVST+. It's just a quirk of the history of how this was developed that Cisco called PVST IEEE when you use the show spanning tree command. So using the default PVST plus here. Next thing to tell you about the output of the command, there's two sections, the root ID section and the bridge ID section. The root ID gives you information about the root bridge. The bridge ID section gives you information about this switch. So the root ID information should be similar on all of the switches in your local area network. The bridge ID section will specify the MAC address for that individual switch switch. 
Next thing, we're on the root bridge here. We can see that very clearly. Under the root ID section, it tells us this bridge is the root. And that's why the MAC address is the same in the root ID section and in the bridge ID section because this switch is the root bridge. And notice that for this example, the switch's MAC address ends in D43D. That's important when we look at the information coming up on the next switch we'll look at, which is a, a non-root bridge. So D43D. We can see the priority in here. The priority is 32768, which is the default priority. This has been elected as the root bridge, so I can see very simply from this information that all my bridges, all my switches must be set with the default priority, which is 32768. And that this switch was elected as the root bridge because it's got the lowest MAC address. The last thing to see on the output of the command is it gives you the status of all your interfaces that are connected to other switches. Because this is the root bridge, all our parts are going to be designated parts and forwarding. Okay, next let's look at the output on a non-root bridge. So that was on axis 3. Next up we'll look at the output on CD1. And from the diagram we can see it is forwarding on interfaces fast 0, 024 and 0 slash 21. And it's blocking on interface gig 0 slash 2. So looking at the output on CD1, I do a show spanning tree for VLAN 1 again. I can see that this switch is also running PVST+. You want all the switches in your network to be running the same spanning tree version. Again, we've got the root ID and the bridge ID section. And because this is not the root bridge, the two MAC addresses are different now. Again, the root ID section gives you information about the root bridge. You want all of the switches in your network for the same VLAN to be agreeing on which, which switch this is. And we can see that it is the same D43D, so that looks good. In the bridge ID section, I can see that this switch's unique MAC address ends in 3902. This switch's MAC address starts with 0090, which is higher than the root bridge's MAC address of 0001. That's why the root bridge was preferred over this one. Other information in the root ID section, I can see that this switch's cost to get to the root bridge is 19, and the root part is interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 24. That's the least cost path interface to get to the root bridge. And down at the bottom, I can see that interface gig 0 slash 2, its role is alternate, so it is a blocking part. It's the part that has been selected to block a potential loop. Interfaces fast 0 slash 21 and 0 slash 24 are designated in a root part, and they are both forwarding. Okay, so that was CD1. If we look at the topology diagram again, let's also have a look at CD2. And on CD2, all its interfaces should be forwarding. So let's jump into the lab to see this. I will go to my enable prompt and show spanning tree for VLAN 1. And in here, I can see that it agrees that the root bridge is access free, ending with MAC address D43D. This switch's MAC address also begins with 0090, so it's a higher MAC. That's why it was not selected as the root bridge. All of my switches are running the default priority of 32768. For this switch to get out to the root bridge, it uses interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 21, and the cost is 19. I can see all of my ports that are connected to other switches down at the bottom here, and fast 0 slash 21, again, is the root part. The other two parts are designated parts, so all of these parts are forwarding. Finally, let's look at the topology diagram again. The last switch to look at is access 4, which is forwarding on fast 0 slash 24. That is the root part, and it's blocking on fast 0 slash 21. So let's jump on to access 4 in the lab. 
show spanning tree for VLAN 1. I can see it also agrees that the root bridge is access free. This switch's MAC address begins with 0060, which is higher than the root bridge's MAC address. All of my switches are using a product A32768. The root port is fast 0 slash 24, and the cost to get to the root bridge is 38. We're forwarding on port fast 0 slash 24, and we're blocking on port fast 0 slash 21. So that's how you can check your spanning tree topology. There's not really a quick way of doing this. If you just have command line access to your switches, jump onto one of your switches and do show spanning tree there. That will tell you which is the root bridge to find the entire topology and to see which blocks are, which parts are forwarding and which are blocking. You really just have to map it out switch by switch. So it's handy if you use a pencil and paper for this you can draw it down and diagram everything okay so that was the show spanning tree command another command you can use to check the path that traffic is taking throughout your layer 2 network is show mac address table so for this example we're going to check the path that traffic is taking from pc1 going to r1 and you can see in the diagram that it should go from pc1 to access 3 to cd1 to r1 so let's verify that so I go onto R1 and I do a show interface for gig 0 slash 1 there to find out the MAC address because I'm going to check the path traffic is taking from PC1 to that interface with IP address 10.10.10.2. In the example, I can see that it ends with MAC address 2D02. I then go on to the first hop switch, which is axis 3, and I do a show MAC address table, and I see the entry there for VLAN 1 for the MAC address ending in 2D02, which is that interface on R1, that the outgoing port is going to be fast 0 slash 24, going towards CD1, which is what I expected. I then go into the next hop of CD1, and I do a show MAC address table there, and I can see that the MAC address was learned on interface gig 0 slash 1 so again that was what I expected going directly to R1 okay let's also check this in the lab for traffic going from PC2 to R1 and you can see from the diagram we expect the traffic to go from PC2 to access 4 to CD2 to access 3 to CD1 and then to R1 so first off Let's go on to R1 and check the MAC address. So I need to open up in Packet Tracer here. I'll go to the command line and show interface gig 0 slash 1. That's the interface with IP address 10.10.10.2. And I can see that, yes, the MAC address ends in 2D02. Then I will go on to PC2 and open up a command prompt on here. I'll clear my ARP cache first and then I'll ping 10.10.10.2 to generate some traffic so that the switches in the path will learn the MAC address. Then looking at the topology diagram, PC2's first hop is axis 4, and I expect that the traffic will go out interface fast 0 slash 24. So let's go on to the axis 4 switch and do a show MAC address table on here. Look for the entry for 2D02, and yes, the traffic is going out fast 0 slash 24. And that will go to CD2, and I expect the traffic out CD2 to go out interface fast 0 slash 21. So let's check that. So a show MAC address table on here. Look for the entry to 2D02, and yes, it is going out interface fast 0 slash 21. The next hop, I expect it 
to, well, I know it's going to hit Axis 3 because it's come out FAST 0 slash 21 and CD2. On Axis 3, I expect it to be forwarded out FAST 0 slash 24 to CD1. So let's check that on Axis 3. If I can find the switch in here, there we go. Okay, so on Axis 3, show MAC address table and 2DO2, yes, is on fast 0 slash 24. And finally, the last hop is going to be CD1. It should be on interface gig 0 slash 1. So let's go on to CD1 and a show MAC address table on here. And there it is, 2DO2, yes, it is going out interface gig 0 slash 1. So that's how you can verify the spanning tree by mapping out your root ports, your designated ports, and your alternate blocking ports. And also how you can use the show MAC address table command to verify that traffic will be going through that path. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with Cisco Networks for free, then you can download my 400-page CCNA lab guide, which you can see above my head right now. Also, check out the video about my CCNA course. It's the highest-rated course online. Thanks.